Self-Esteem Parenting 12. Parenting with warmth and a smile. A number of years ago, I came home from work and my wife was cooking at the stove a pasta lasagna dinner and two of the younger children were standing on chairs overseeing or supervising her as she was preparing the meal. They were getting in her way. They were overseeing her like the mashkiach, so to speak. And they were interfering and getting too close to the hot stove. When I walked in the door, my wife said, Yisrael, you're on. Please distract them. Get them out of my hair. So I was about to do this. I was about to say, would you guys just get your act together? Stop bothering him. I was about to do this fatherly admonition, raise your voice, you know, get your act together type of thing. And I stopped myself and said, you know, I don't think that screaming, yelling, raising my voice, arguing, criticizing, putting down, showing power is ever going to work over here. It hasn't worked in the past. It's not going to work this time either. So I tried a different tactic. I said, hmm. I grabbed the towel like this, put it over my arm. I looked for a nearby bottle of wine. And I said, oh, jolly good. Uh, would you like a table for two then? Oh, come this way. They stopped what they were doing, stopped bothering my wife, looked toward me, astonished, and started to come down off the chairs. I want to set up a table for you. I went into the living room with them. I set up the Fisher Price table with those little blue chairs with a plastic plates and a fork and a knife. I said, I'm your waiter for this evening. Tonight's special is sea bass uh, with a little bit of uh, pesto sauce. And we also have today's finest wine, the Joy Vin, Rashi Vineyards wine, and served with uh, peche flambe and uh, your favorite uh, dessert. Uh, which would you like? And I played a game with them, and I smoothed with them, and I interact with them in this funny kind of uh, jovial way. I distracted them. And they really appreciated it because they stopped bothering my wife. I had a good time with them. And we changed the whole tone of the, of the house from a argumentative, stop doing that disciplinary tone into a positive, upbeat tone that changed the whole atmosphere of the home. Now, when we come home from a hard day's work and we had a tough day, our face, our mind is a Rishus Arabim. It belongs in the public domain. Even if I had a tough day, I can't bring that to bear on my family. Don't bother daddy, he's in a bad mood. He had a tough day. Rather, I have to turn my back on the world as I walk toward the door of my house, turn my back on my work day, turn my back on the world and face my obligations as a positive parent, as a parent who can parent with warmth and a smile. Where do we see this in the Torah? Where the Torah requires us to parent or to interact with warmth and a smile. In this week's Parsha, Parsha's Vayechi, the last Parsha in, in Breshis, we see the following. The bracha that Yaakov Abinu gave to Yehuda says, You are red-eyed from wine and white-toothed from milk. The altar quotes the Gemara in Ksubis, page 111b, and says the following. Rabbi Yochanan said, Greater is the one who smiles at his friend than the one who gives him milk to drink, as it says, red-eyed from wine and white-toothed from milk. It is an obligation for us to smile and be white-toothed from milk. We could give milk and give provide chesed and give milk to someone, but we have to do something more than that, says the Gemara. The Gemara says it's more important to give warmth and to give love and to give sensitivity than even giving someone milk to drink. Giving milk to drink is the physical needs, but giving an emotional res response of warmth and love is even more important. The same is true when we have a mishulach, a person collecting money for its daka from Israel or from local needs, comes into our home and we say, oh, mashallah, mashulach, yeah. And our attitude is really hurtful sometimes when we're not smiling, and not only give it, we give them a, a check, but how about giving them a smile and want to say, hi, how are you? Where are you from? Would you like, like some milk to drink, some water to drink, uh, a biscuit, a cookie? That kind of warmth 
is really the chesed that we're obligated to do, not only by giving them a check or helping them out in charity when we can and as much as we can, but to give them a saver panim yafos, to bring them a joy that they are a respected individual, even though they're down and out, even though they have to collect, and it's very devastating to have to collect money door to door from, from people. We have to give them a sense of validation, validation and dignity as an individual. We have to give them red tooth from wine and white tooth from milk. We have to give them that warmth, that wine, that glow of wine that I offered my children. We have to give that to our Mishulachim, who raise money as well. And so therefore the mitzvah of loving one's neighbor is to treat each fellow Jew with respect. So much so that we have to treat him like royalty. As the Gemara says, that a person must treat a, another person as a king over yourself. You must make a fellow Jew a king over yourself by serving him with smile, with a warmth, with an acceptance. What is this thing called smile? Why am I talking about the idea of warmth toward other individuals and in particular to our children? Because a smile, a warm countenance, body language of acceptance means that I value you. I accept you. I think you're okay. You're good. And it's really important to be able to convey not only words, but also words of warmth. We say, hi, how are you? How are you doing? We can say that coldly or matter-of-factly. We can also say, hi, how are you? How are you doing? We as parents have to work on ourselves to give warmth, even if my personality is not a warm, natural personality. Perhaps I'm a more anxious personality or more direct personality. But I have to work on myself and become a softer, warmer person. In that way, we can convey this kind of acceptance, this kind of love to our children. So what happens when I have a bad day? Am I supposed to not be truthful to my children? Am I not supposed to show them that I had a tough day and people can have a tough day too? Aren't they going to have tough days? Yes, it's true. They're going to have tough days. But the general rule is 80 to 90% of our interactions with children have to be positive, have to be warm. 10 to 15, 20% can be disciplinarian, can be discipline. Love, 80%, 20% discipline. That's the rule because it has to be more warmth and more wine and more white-toothed and more chesed and more validation and appreciation and body language of acceptance and validation and love and warmth then there is discipline. Because otherwise the children will see you as a disciplinarian and will not want to listen to you after a time. They'll say, oh, another argument, another, another lecture, 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 lecture. They'll roll their eyes. But otherwise it's in our best interest to be positive because otherwise the children will lose interest in a relationship with ourselves. And therefore we have to be positive, warm, follow the bracha of Yaakov Avinu to Yehuda. Give them red wine and white tooth. Give them a smile and give them the warmth of red wine. And that way, Mir Hashem, we'll see that our children warm to us. If we warm to them, they'll warm to us. That's parenting with warmth and a smile.